Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. Today I'll be teaching you how to achieve this animation in After Effects. I've attached the working file in the description. Feel free to download it and follow along. Without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, let's get started. As you can see here, this is my storyboard. I've got four frames here, and then it's very straightforward. I've got this ball that's bouncing around up and down in the first scene, and it's gonna shoot to the right, bounce on these three shapes to give it more energy, and then it's gonna shoot to the third scene where we have some secondary animation here with a bunch of shapes, and then maybe the circle can be duplicated to take the entire screen. And then it's gonna go to the last scene where we have all these cylinders. And then once our object passes through the cylinders, it's gonna change color or change the glow setting. So this is a color palette that I have over here. And then we already set up the animation in After Effects with the storyboard. This is the animation that we have. Let me go back to After Effects and let's go into the demo composition. Let's see what we have in terms of animation. Very fast paced, straightforward, simple animation. In the first scene, you can see all we animated is the ball just bounced a couple times. And then we have a null object controlling the whole scene, shooting to the right to transition to the second scene where we have this ball coming in from the left, touch this shape over here, and then make it spin a little bit, and then touch this shape over here, make it spin, and then touch the last one, push it out to the scene, where the ball just come to the center. And then all of a sudden in the third scene, we got this line that's coming across the screen, touching the ball and push it down where we have this little shape here coming down with the ball. And then we have some secondary animation in the background, some trim path. Once the ball goes inside the shape, it's gonna bounce quickly a couple times and then shoot to the right where we have the bow passing through these cylinders and then each one is gonna change color. So this is a basic setup of our animation. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about is color. So if we want to make this animation more stylized, we need to not only have the basic animation set up, but also add some extra stuff like the color animation. In the first scene, I see this is pretty static with all the blue color staying in the entire scene. So first of all, I want to go inside this blue shape here, and then I want to animate the color. And let me go back to my project setting, and then we have our color palette over here. Let's drag it in. Let's go inside the block here, and then go down the drop down menu. Let's go into the fill, and then let's add a keyframe on the color setting. Go for two frames. Let's change this color to maybe a orange color, and then let's go forward two frames again, let's change it to purple, two frames again, let's change it to yellow, and then two frames again, let's change it to red, and then two frames again, let's get it back to the blue color. And this is gonna be the color change for our background. However, you can see there's this ground level that's staying still in blue color, so we need to change those colors as well. Let me copy all these colors, Command C. Okay, that looks pretty good, and then we need to right click toggle whole keyframes so that it's not fading in and out between these colors. It's gonna jump to each color. Let's turn off my color palette, move it all the way to the top, and then we can turn it off for now. And let's see the animation now with a color change. That just adds a bit more energy. And once we add the glow effect, it's gonna make it much better. So that's a color variation you can always add to your project to make it look better. The next thing I wanna talk about is the glow effects. Let's go inside layer new and then add a adjustment layer. Let's call this one glow. Go to effects and presets, let's search for deep glow. Double click and all of a sudden we can see everything is just glowing and then it looks much better right now. After we add the glow effect, it just makes the color animation that we did just now much more interesting. I think the glow is a bit too much. Let's change the radius to maybe 250 and then the exposure to 0.8, something like that. So this is just one adjustment layer that I'm overlaying on top of all the layers so that 
our glow effect is the same across all the different elements in the scene. However, I can still do some individual glow effects for the different elements on each layer to add more variation to the glow as well. So originally when we did the storyboard, this is where we want to add the glow over here. Basically, when this circle passed through each cylinder, I want it to almost like a trigger for the cylinder to glow one at a time whenever the circle passed through it. And to do that, let's go inside the first one. Let me add a deep glow to the cylinder and all of a sudden you can see it looks much better now. Let's add a keyframe on the exposure setting. Hit U on the keyboard to show the keyframe. Now what we want to do is, at this point, I want the exposure to be at one. Maybe you can turn it off a bit more, maybe 250. Yeah, that's good enough. It doesn't have to be 500 for the radius. Now let's go forward two frames or maybe one because the animation is really fast. I just want the cylinder, cylinder to glow for like one frame. And then after one frame, it's gonna go back to zero for the exposure. And then at the beginning, it should be zero as well. So it's not glowing when the ball is not in the scene. And then when the ball passed through it, it's gonna glow one frames. So that's our animation. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Let's go into the curves and then we can manipulate the curve, something like this. That looks good. Let's just copy the value and then paste the value onto the same set of keyframes and copy this one, Command C. Let's search for the next cylinder. So this one is the next cylinder. I just want to add the keyframe to this one, Command V, hit U, and then make sure when the ball passes it, it's gonna glow for one frame. Now we just do the same thing for this purple cylinder and then we do the same thing for the last one. Now you can see after we finish it, we have this glow effect whenever the ball is passing through the cylinder and then when the ball comes back, it's gonna trigger the glow again the second time so that this is the animation that we have. That looks pretty nice. All right, let's see after we add the glow effect on the scene. And the next thing I wanna talk about is the echo effects. In order to give the motion a bit more motion blur, what we do is we use the echo effect to add some motion blur to the element that we have in the scene. So first of all, we can do a motion blur on this ball here. Let's find the ball layer and then let's go search for the echo effect. Double click at the echo effect and then let's go inside the setting. We need to make sure echo time, we change it to 0 0.0002. And then number of echoes, we can either do five or 10, depends on what you like. Let's change the operator to maximum. And then let's see what we have for our animation. And now you can see with five copies, we have this ball just shooting down with a bunch of echoes so that it gives it a motion blur effect to add more variation to our animation. That looks pretty good, I like it. And we can do the same thing for the other element in the scene. For example, we can do it on this shape here, the first shape that the ball hits. We can go copy the echo effect and then paste down to this layer. If I toggle the timeline, you can see when it comes in, it becomes thicker. I think we can tune down the number of copies, maybe give it a three copies, three echoes when it comes in. So when it changes in motion, it almost give it a smear effect to this animation. And then after we add it in most of the elements in the scene, it's gonna make the whole thing a bit more interesting. So we can not only add this one onto the first shape, but also onto the second shape. And then the last one over here at the bottom, they all work pretty well. And then we can add it to this ball in the center as well. Let's see the animation with our echo effects on for the whole scene. That looks pretty good. And then, and then after the echo effects, what we can do is we can add some final touches to our stylization. 
And the first thing I want to command A, group all the elements together, name this one final animation. And then with the final animation, we can go to add an adjustment layer. Let's go add a noise effects. Change it to 10%, give it a bit of noise. And then let's do a chromatic aberration as well for the last thing. Duplicate the layer three times and then go to effects and presets. Let's search for channel mixers. And then the first one, I want this red and red channel to be on 100%, turn the blue and the green to zero. And then the second one, let's copy this effect. The second one, let's ch change the green and green to 100% and then turn the red and red to zero. And then the last one, let's change the blue and blue to 100%, turn everything else to zero. With all the three layers, let's go to make the blending modes into add. Now we can change the position of the final animation. Let's move this one up two frames and then left one if I go forward and you can see there's a slight shift in the color channels if I toggle between these layers you can see the first layer is purely in red and then the second layer is purely in green and then the third layer is purely in blue with them added on top of each other this is effect chromatic aberration that we created to give more stylization to our animation and with that, that's everything I want to talk about in this video. Let's take a look at our final animation with everything that we added on this project to make it more stylized and professional. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, please leave me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. We will be publishing more After Effects tutorials like this every single week. In addition, we also have a free exclusive community where motion designers hang out and learn from each other. Click the link in the description to join our exclusive community. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.